some octopus that's in the sea. Uh, and what it does, you, you don't even have to, like, threaten it. It just spits in the water. And if that stuff gets on you, does you in. Again, I'm... I, mm. So, in a way, it's good knowledge, because... I mean, I have stuff like that. But that's just <laughs> reassured me that I'm doing the right thing. If they're knocking about, just gauzing everywhere, <laughs> uh, you don't even have to be near one. You don't even know if it's been spitting and stuff. It can kill you. It just seems unfair. I haven't armed it. I haven't gone near it. Why is it getting annoyed with me? It doesn't seem right. So that's where a knowledge has, has not helped that octopus out. Because now, when you eat them, I just think, yeah, have another one. Do you know what I mean? Get rid of them. <laughs> Another conversation with himself. Another conversation with himself. What is your favourite curse word? Um, I don't. I don't think I, I do anything like that. I just. I think people can tell by my face when I'm like fed up. Uh, well, they know you're fed up because you're always whinging. Uh, I don't think I've got one. Uh, knobhead. <laughs> And I think it's... But you wouldn't call your nan a knobhead, would you? What would you call a nan? Uh, But she doesn't do anything to annoy me that much. But if she did, what would you say? If she really annoyed well, you? Well, knobhead's all right, isn't it? Because she'll, she'll, she sort of gets it. It's one of them things that everybody understands, but it's not too offensive. Right. What a knobhead. All right, you're getting into this, aren't you? It's, uh, that sums it up. But I don't, I don't really... Do you need one of them? What's that doing for you? It's better to think, innit? Like, okay, I've just slagged off that octopus, but at no point was a, a effing and jeffing about it. <laughs> I've t you, you know how annoyed I am with it. I don't have to start swearing about it. And th that's that's. What would you do though if you were swimming, right? It was a nice little thing. You're on holiday, right? And there's this octopus there, and you're going around, right? And, it, and you just see it start spitting at you, poison. What yeah, would you say? Well, to it? well, it's too late then, innit? And I'd kick it, <laughs> and I'd say, you knobhead. I, I would, uh, but what's the point? What's the point in getting annoyed now? Because it's done its, it's done its stuff, hasn't it? Think of it, no bed <laughs> under the water. What is this octopus thinking? Oh God! Oh, okay, you fucking eight-legged shit. I'm you, not bothered. I'm not bothered. You, I don't know what you're you saying. Fucking, fucking cunt yeah. of a mollusk. I'm gonna just spit at you again. It's not bothered. You slimy little fucking boneless wanker. This is why the face Are you is still good. talking to the octopus? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't believe it. He's written it down. <laughs> That's downloadable as a ringtone, and it's also the jingle for Carl's Diary, just reading excerpts of Carl's Diary. Went home and looked up Freud on the internet, didn't find him that interesting, so looked at some other philosophers instead. Socrates, Aristotle, why have you just... Just to show that I'm learning. Well, that's not learning. That's just that's learning their names. That's a list. You might as well write one to a hundred. <laughs> yeah, but if someone says, oh, what's your favourite philosopher? I'll go, hang on a minute, and I've got them written down. But what, uh, why have you got <laughs> Wait a minute, one? I'll go home, get my enormous diary out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get a wheelbarrow, bring in my workings, <laughs> and say one of the la names I've written down. And when they say, well, why do you like him, yeah, why you, do you, you like, just why, run away. Well, I, I noticed you put um, Socrates first. Why is he your favourite philosopher? You throw the diary at them and leg it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and then you go on to say, it's weird how names have changed, but then there's no other point there. <laughs> it just is, isn't it? When you think about, like, Socrates, I've never heard that on anyone who I know, <laughs> is what I mean. It's just, in a way... But you're not Greek, are you? But how did that go about back then? I mean, it, when say if you were phoning someone up and he said, uh, I'm booking a table for two, they go, name, Socrates. Did he ever go, cheers? But I don't know what else point you're making. I'm just saying it's, it's a name that's awkward. You're always going to have to go, can you spell that for me? You go, and it's not just him. Look at all the other names that are on that list. But they're from a different country. And a different era. Yeah, I know, but the names... I have been to Rome and stuff, and you sort of go... Well, ancient Rome. Just, just Rome. <laughs> it hasn't changed, has it? 
Rome, so it can be ancient Rome or Rome in 2006. It's yeah. the same buildings. Oh, I used to love Nero going around on his Fiat Punto. <laughs> Lao Tzu from years ago came up with some good stuff. One, he know he who knows does not speak. He who speaks does not know. Not entirely true. To lead people, walk behind them. Yeah. And of course, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Yeah, yeah. did that. Uh, his favourites. Maybe maybe this is why people are at the start line spectating at the Commonwealth Games. Well, I, no, it's just that I, I've never understood why in Olympics and stuff like that, if you're going to walk on the start line, go to the end where you see the winner. But because of that saying, it actually makes sense, doesn't it? It's like, well, every step starts with a step or whatever. Say uh, again? Uh, every race, you know, you've got to start with a with with a step. Yeah. So, um... Uh, Which is to, uh, am I talking to now, you or your brain? Well, I was thinking about it a bit, so I think I was in control of it a bit more. So, and what have you come up with? Just, just, if you want to stay at the start line, do. <laughs> what does that mean? I'm just saying, if if you're into, ra I'm not, I wouldn't watch a race, right? Okay, but is this you or your brain I'm talking to you now? This is me. Okay. I wouldn't watch... Are you use, are you going to, are you going to bring the brain into it, or is it, there's no... I don't just... know, let's just see what happens. <laughs> okay. But all I'm saying is... Right. If I was to watch a race... Yeah. I wouldn't hang about the start line, because... Well, I, you just I'm said capable. you would. What, did I? Yeah, you said that that's the place to start, because every every race starts with a step. <laughs> no, <laughs> but I wouldn't normally. <laughs> right, I okay. won't watch any race. The brain definitely hasn't been used to you. No, is this you or you? I'm just saying about me. If I was on holiday... Yeah. ...and Suzanne said there's a race going on down the road... Yeah. ...I'd go, well, let's go keep going down the road and stand at the finish line. Okay, but, but now what have you thought? According to Lazoo, yeah. I'd say, well, hang on a minute, every s race starts with a single step. Yeah. How many people around the start line? Is there more room there? She goes, yeah, I'll go, let's go there then. It's less busy. Right, and what would you see there then? I'd see people starting the race, but I wouldn't be that impressed with them because I'd go, well, I don't know if any of these are any good. So would you start at the start or the end then? <laughs> I'd, I, if it was down to me, I, I'd just probably stay at the finish line. Okay, so you wouldn't want to see the first step then? So what not do you think really. of Lazoo now then? Uh, it's not what, but I wrote down three of his. That one isn't my favourite. That was the third. I preferred the leading people from behind. Okay, and what would you do to lead someone now then? Um, well, if you're behind, you don't have to take responsibility, do you? You can go, well, I didn't send you where you went there. That's not really leading them, though, is it? Yeah, because I've made them think. I've gone, uh, they go, oh, I've just, I'd go, oh, should have been looking where you're going. <laughs> I haven't led them in that hole, but they've learnt a lesson. They won't go in a hole again. <laughs> I've ever been a part of. I mean, that was incredible. <laughs> Never mind Aristotle and Socrates. That was incredible, that. Um, if someone's out there, could they make a transcript of that? Because I think that, you know, in a thousand years' time, that'd be amazing. That was incredible, Carl. And not once was the brain used. <laughs> the jingle there for Rockbusters, the, um, one of the most hated quizzes in the history of mankind. Joking, aren't you? The people loathe it. Uh, they're loving it. Well, well, it's the last one anyway, so just get over, just do yeah. the answers. Hold on, we can't do another one though, because we can't give the answers out, so this just... Yeah, this is the last one, it's just the answers for last week for people who are doing it. Okay, right. well, small mercies. Um, the first one that I initials was CK, right? Yeah. Uh, the clue was, uh, do you know the songs that you sing at Christmas? Yeah. That bloke over there is the best at singing them. So what's what? What the songs you do? Carol King. Carol King. Right. Yeah. Well that done. works. Yeah. That works. Very right. well done. Uh, the second one, MG. I told the homosexual man that the great tree was mine. Right, MG. Gay. Yeah. Marvin Gaye, obviously. Marvin Gaye. But, yeah. but how do you get oh, to Marvin? What's it? That's what? my my vine, isn't it? That that that. I told my, you. My vine, gay. Yeah. My vine. Yeah. And the last one. <laughs> My Vine Gay. That's shocking. It's, it's, well, the last one, it was, shit. the last one, the initial was S. Um, I said, uh, I asked you oh. if you believe in Father Christmas, what would you say? What's, what's the name for Father Christmas? Santa Claus. Right, so if, if I said to you, do you believe in Father Christmas, you'd sort of go. No. Yeah, but, yeah, but what, what's his name? So what would you do? You'd go, oh, Santa. 
No, I don't. I can't don't. say it. that's what you do there. You go Santa, nah, Santa, nah, Santana. So that was that was the last one. Well done to <laughs> Bob in Yorkshire. Got all three of them right. He'll get a little <laughs> signed picture. <laughs> oh well, that's it. That's the end of season two of Ricky Gervais show. Uh, we're back soon. Check out Ricky Gervais dot com for information and upcoming news. There's a free video cast we're doing. Um, uh, we're also um, bringing out a book at the podcast. Uh, yeah, that'll have a lot of the um, the best conversations we've had with Carl, and I think there have been some of them in this show. And uh, Carl has illustrated all his points and his memories to, to, I mean, that he thinks that's proof, Victorian evidence. So, I mean, it is the ramblings of a, a maniac, but you can pre-order that on um, Amazon. Um, uh, well... Thanks very much. Uh, it's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, Bye. and Carl Pilkington. Bye. Audible hopes you've enjoyed this programme. John Lennon and Yoko Ono, Happy Christmas, War is Over, on Radio 2, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Uh, good morning. And uh, our producer Carl Pilkington, but more about Carl later, we'll have to, we want to introduce the world to Carl, don't we? It's extraordinary to think that there are people yet that have not experienced Carl. A I whole know. new audience is going to discover I think of me and Stephen as like Anthony Hopkins in The Elephant Man. Yeah. Just taking Carl <laughs> round the country, the world. Maybe yeah. just letting, maybe some doctors and surgeons might want to, uh... He's there nude, and they can yeah. just ask him questions, examine him, see what makes him tick. You know, uh, that is Carl's favourite film, by the way, The Elephant Man. Mm -hmm. He said he loves it. He said, he said, one, he said, the title tells you exactly what you're going to get. Yeah. He loved that, right? He said, two, it's sad. And, uh, I was saying, why is it sad? He said, well, there's that bit where um, they take him, um, to show all the surgeons, and, uh, The Elephant Man is all naked and that. And, uh, the bloke goes... The, the genitals are normal, and Carl went, think of that, the one thing you would want like an elephant, and he gets the head. <laughs> That's why I thought it was That's sad. That's the kind of mind process of Carl, which we'll introduce to you later. Um, in the meantime... Well, yeah, um, you know, uh, if you're expecting uh, Jonathan Ross, then, uh, you're gutted. Yeah. Uh, you probably know me from such works as The Office, Extras, <laughs> Alias. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, Carl, uh... You don't know about Stephen is, uh, is more familiar. Um, Stephen co-wrote and uh, directed The Office and Extras with me. Um, you may have seen him in Extras as the agent. Uh, you may have seen him briefly in The Office. He is a god. You referring to the character there, are you? Or? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, <laughs> um, no, well, no, no, it's just a little. Inconvenient. I'm just trying to paint a picture for people at Christmas. Sure, Steve. Yeah, um, I wouldn't say goglite. I think goglite freaks harsh. You know, these are pretty. These are designer specs. And, uh, right. yeah, admittedly, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit tall, but, uh... Six foot seven. Yeah, but let's not have a go at that. Carl, we've got more like this later. I think we should play a record. We've done yeah, introductions. Pop a little song on. But do you remember well, the first time you saw Steve? Well, let, let's, let's pop a little song on on that, all right? Chat about it in a bit. All right. All right. Bruce Springsteen. Bit of Bruce Springsteen. Santa Claus is coming to town. Merry Christmas, everyone. Yeah, Merry Christmas indeed. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Hello. And, uh, Carl Pilkington, if you have tuned in to, uh, hear Jonathan. It's the last time I mention him. Um, we haven't got him today. You've got, uh, us for the next, uh, couple of Saturdays. I feel like a, a stepfather. Sure. Do you know what I mean? I want to say to the listener, listen, you know, I, I never replaced Daddy. Yeah. But I am here, and I, and I, and I do my best for you, and I, and I love you. Yeah. Listen, I'm doing mummy now, live with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's, that's exactly right, yeah. yeah. And hopefully that people will appreciate us and enjoy us just as much as Jonathan. I don't care if they don't. In really? fact, I, I intend to shave millions of <laughs> listeners off this by the end of the You're doing a good job. But the ones that have stayed listening to the end, they love it. Yeah, both of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think I've got to have Christmas dinner with them tomorrow anyway, so <laughs> I can just have a chat. Uh... So we were introducing ourselves, I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Um, now, uh, it's difficult to describe Carl, I just think you'll have to get to know him over the next, um, two hours. But, um, we have, um, uh, taken the liberty of getting some stuff ready for you if you want to find out more about him. If you go to rickygervais.com, we've put up a special little page. Go into Who's Carl, 
Uh, we've got a little biography up of him and loads of pictures. And you have never seen a head rounder. Than he looks like Mr. Spoon from Button Moon. <laughs> yes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or Bod. Yeah. Bod. Grown up. Like There's it, a little yeah. bit of Charlie Brown in there. Charlie He's even got Brown. a little striped shirt. It's perfectly rounded. It's balding, yeah. like to. And it's not just good balding. It's sort of like he looks like a <laughs> worn tennis ball. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's got a little bit of growth. It's yeah. not that sort of Teddy, De Teddy Savalas cool bold. No. It's just a scruffy little. I don't know what it is. Happy it Christmas and that. <laughs> 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 what do you think of that then, Carl? Your introduction to the nation. Well, you know, if we're going to start picking on looks and stuff, like you mentioned before, we can we can go over everyone in this room. What? I mean, let's make it fair. What? Let's, <laughs> have, a chat, let's have a chat about, about Steve over there. What? What are you talking about? Well, you know, you know how sort of I felt when I first saw you. Wait, wait, right! Don't go mad, Steve. Let Carl speak. Right, this is his platform. No, no, I'm just saying. You just said about painting a picture. Yeah, go on then. I wouldn't paint a picture of that. Is it? Is what? No, I'm not, Steve. You know I'm not having a go, mate. You're a good. What do you mean you're not having a go? It sounds like you're having a go. Well, what did you think when you first saw him, mate? When he first walked into that room all those years ago? Uh, sort of thought he looked like a cartoon. <laughs> no, no, Steve, you know, you know, but you know that you look a little bit odd. This, this what? isn't like a, this isn't like a shock to you. <laughs> thirty-one. Right, but I so don't you're thir like thirty-one. I don't, I, I, what do you look like as a baby? <laughs> I mean, why I, is this a character assassination? No, no, I'm, not, I'm not having a go. I'm just saying what it was like. Now, I'm, I'm used to you now. When I see you, I don't sort of double take anymore. <laughs> I just. He's coming out with this. No, but you know, when, when you popped in and that, it was just a bit of a shock. And now, you know, I've, I've got used to it and that. Good, uh, you're happy now. You can cope now. Yeah. Hold on. You were shocked when you saw Steve Merchant. You told me once you went to school with two fellas who had big heads and webbed hands and feet. Yeah. And they weren't related. Why Why were there two people about your school? And yet you find Steve <laughs> freaky. You never said freaky. <laughs> <laughs> you said freaky. <laughs> you said freaky. <laughs> Madonna hung up. Now. She's um, given us uh, a platinum disc to give away. Nice. We were, uh, and we've got a, a big prizes for Madonna. And uh, if Cole people are Clay. rushing around today on Christmas Eve, tr thinking I'm, I wanted to buy a Madonna platinum disc for uh, for me, my mum, this uh, is no, I can't find one anywhere. I can't buy in the shops. Perfect. Um, and that's coming up. But Carl, just I I. I don't want to. I'm not stirring it, right? You, you started a little bit of a war with Steve. You, you always are have. stirring it. Well, no, 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 well, no. This is what it, well, this is stirring right now. This is this is the terminology. But do you know that the fellas in your school, yeah. the big heads and webbed feet and webbed hands. Webbed sort of hands. Yeah. But but they hung around together, did they? Uh, I don't think they did. And they were nothing to do with each other. No, I think people expected them to sort of knock about together. But they, they must have thought, oh, that's, that'd be too obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but where did you live? Near a power plant? Well, I mean, why why did you have... I don't think it had anything to do with that, though. Just sometimes you get a little... Look at Steve, he didn't live near a power plant. <laughs> no, no. Listen, can I just stop you there, right? No, let me just stop you there, because I... I it always happens. As soon as we, we you know, it's, it's supposed to be a nice day, and suddenly you're yeah, having a go, right? Uh, now, this, has got, this got sent on the email, OK? Now, this is not me saying this. This is someone who's forwarded a review that was put, put on the web. It was a review of your appearance comedy DVDs, okay? I'm reading, I'm quoting this, this is not me saying it. <laughs> it says that uh, Carl, through a combination of his intriguing way of thinking and slightly less than human appearance, right, Carl may just be the proof needed to muffle the cries of creationists the world over, as this missing link demonstrates that not only did man evolve from apes, but the process isn't quite finished yet. <laughs> okay, now that's someone else, an external person's opinion of you. But you the, the, the terrible thing about that is, Carl's feelings aren't hurt because he didn't understand a word of that. I said the word creationist, that lost it. That lost it. You've know, you got to remember that Carl, you know when um, people say they're talking to their cat and they go, oh look, look at him, look at it, it's like he can understand what we're saying. Well, Carl's got that look, but you know he can't can't understand yeah. what right. what you're saying. All right, Carl. All right. No, but all I mean now we're now we're talking about your head and that. Right. When you go back to say your mum and dad, it's Christmas time, right? There's a lot of people <laughs> travelling up and down the country, going back to the mum and dad. They probably haven't seen them all year, right? <laughs> when you go back, <laughs> is it a shock to them again? <laughs> <laughs> no, just, like I say, I'm used to you. I see you a few times a week. I don't do the double take. But what I mean is, when you go back, do they sort of go, oh, there he is. <laughs> Play a record. This is it's. I let's leave it then. Let's move on then because I'm, I'm, I'm going to get angry. And we haven't even got. It's only. It's not even <laughs> twenty-five pounds. Oh, Christmas. A little bit of Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah. Oh, this is beautiful. Simon and Garfunkel. 
April comes, she will. Looking forward to spring already. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit premature, but fine. <laughs> well, I thought it'd be, you know, it'd be nice. Yeah. You know, it's, like, it's a bit well, let's cold. Get Christmas over first, all right? Christmas over. I, I love that. My mum used to go, "Oh, that's not over for another year." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you should look short. forward to it all year. <laughs> you know, buy things out of the catalogue, pay for it for the next twelve months, and they go, "Oh, that's not over now." <laughs> but, yeah. You know, five o'clock Christmas Day. That was it. When is Christmas over? Mm. I would say Christmas is over once you've seen the Vicar of Dibley Christmas special. <laughs> really? Yeah. See, I think I it think was earlier than that. I then. think it was when you, you, the elderly ones fall asleep at about 3.30. Really? They wake up because the kid's playing with something noisy. <laughs> something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. That's when, that's when <laughs> Christmas is over. You, you know what you're getting this year, then. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I do. I, uh, I, oh, all right. I was shopping with Carl. I don't give anything away that I bought, right, because, you know, but I've got to tell you something. Um... I, uh, we went into this one shop. I didn't get anything from it, so I can talk about this, uh, for, for looking for, for a present for my girlfriend, Jane. And uh, it was a beautiful shop in St. James's. They're all beautiful around there. And, uh, it was uh, this shop of, uh, sort of, a uh, kind of classic, sort of antiquities, and it was, uh, things that, uh, this guy, you have to ring a bell for the bloke to come down. Carl was just so confused about that. He's used to someone standing there going, can I help you? Yeah. What size do you want? Right, and he came down, and he, he, he loved his stuff. He absolutely loved his stuff. And what sort of stuff was it? Uh, it was sort of stuff that he'd, um, uh, got from it's sort of like churches. It, it was wasn't it was old stuff, It was Steve. carvings. It was from the 16th and 17th yeah. century old. of saints, right? And I, and I said, this is beautiful. And I was talking to him. I said, what's this news going on? Oh, that's so-and-so. I was going, oh, that's wonderful. Look at that, right? And I overheard Carl trying to make conversation. He of this stuff. And it's, it's, you know, oh, at 16th century, 17th century, he went, what's the newest thing you've got in here? Brilliant. And the bloke went, um, oh, we've got a, a statue, I think. From from the, from the 60s of then, and he went, all right. He went, when was the last time you got something in? Bloke went, oh, we get something in every day. And afterwards I said, why were you asking those questions? He was going, well, I just, it always confused me with antiques. What happens when they sell that out? They're not making any more. <laughs> it's not like it's a, a sort of good bu business to get into, that's all. Do you know what I mean? Why? Like, there'll always be well, antiques. Well, not. you said it yourself, the place wasn't buzzing, was it? <laughs> <laughs> He had to pop down. He couldn't even be bothered sort of sat in the shop waiting for a customer because probably days go by <laughs> and nothing's happening. <laughs> Done it. For you to ring the bell to wake him up to say, oh, I'll come and look at this old stuff. <laughs> Forget it. You know what I mean? So you've got all your Christmas shopping then, Carl. You, you, you're bang up to date. You don't. Uh, yeah, I've sorted, sorted, you know, most stuff out. But here's one for you, right? Here's a little question. Go on. Right, I've, I've finished a job for like about ten years. You can say it. No, no. I'm XFM, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, right, 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 where we met. It's yeah, it was, yeah, it was a good little place to work yeah. and everything, but I've had enough. Yeah. You know I mean, after ten years. You're, and you're moving on. We've, yeah, we've got a lot of to move on, haven't you? You've got to, you know, try We're on radio like too. That. Yeah, no, it's good. Right, so yeah. you're moving on, yeah. Right. And, uh, so, th so they gave me a present, right? They sort of said to me, what do you want? Yeah. You've done ten years. Tell us what gift you want and we'll sort you out. Yeah. Right? So I said, oh, brilliant, yeah. So, I knew Suzanne, my girlfriend, wanted a camera. No. Right? What? So. They got me a camera, they wrapped it up and they, you know, they, they, like me leaving dude, they said open it and I go, no, I don't want to open it, no, what, what's going on? So well, I'm going to give it to Suzanne for Christmas. No. That's... Now, what? Why that's is, a disgrace. But why is it though? You can't, you, because it's... It doesn't matter because I could have had a gift for myself and I didn't, I decided... You can't... No, 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 no. That's, that's second hand. That's it's, a, it's not second hand. It, it hasn't been used, I haven't even opened it. But surely no. the point about g buying a gift for your girlfriend is that you've gone in the shop and done it. It's, there's a sentimental it's attachment. That. It's not about that. It's it about is though. It is, no, it is about that. It's no, not it is about. Uh, so want. if you're walking down the street and you saw a camera and it was brand new and you went, "Oh yeah, Suzanne, happy Christmas." Uh, so are you going to tell her it was a gift? Well, no, you? she's at work today, so she doesn't need to know. So you're not even going to tell her. No point. So you've got deceit as well as meanness. It doesn't matter, does it? She's got what That's she wanted. That's disgraceful. She's okay, I want to get the people on the text. Do you think that Carl's in the right? Eighty-eight two ninety-one, eighty-eight two ninety-one. It should Carl be giving a gift to his girlfriend, which he's passing she's off she's getting as anyway. his own present? You, oh, wait a minute, wait. It doesn't uh, matter what the. You cannot. The thing is, it would be okay if you were giving it to a mate or something. But I'd still tell them. I'd even say, look, I didn't, I didn't pay for this, but I know you wanted a camera. Yeah. But you're not going to tell her, so she's going to think you spent 700 quid or something well, on it. 250. <laughs> well, he's, not well, even, he's not even a 700 pound free camera. Yeah. <laughs> she, 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 he went, he went, she'll, she'll never think that uh, I spent 700 quid on her. That is brilliant. Well, it's an improvement on last year. Do you remember what you got last year? I'd rather he told us. Come on. What did you get, what did you get your partner, your life partner, your last lover, year, your last year for Christmas? How long have you been with her first? Um, 11 years. Yeah, for Christmas. Some condoms. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's unbelievable. Bang up two packets. Yeah, no, 
No, you bought her a big bumper packet of condoms from Boots or something, and you got one mm -hmm. packet free. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're all they've all been used. <laughs> Out to winter as take camera before that the pretenders uh it's ricky gervais's show but i'm here steve merchant carl pilkington's here mm -hmm. christmas eve radio 2 merry christmas producer just came in and said oh can you give out the uh the web address um bbc.co.uk forward slash radio 2 i went yeah why he said uh well just in case people want to listen to this show again <laughs> <laughs> yeah right <laughs> <laughs> oh. He's got a sense of humour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as if. So, Carl, we've had loads and loads of emails. We should just, if, in case you've just tuned in, uh, Carl received a leaving gift of a digital camera uh, when he was leaving a job, and he's not even unwrapped it, he's giving it straight to his girlfriend for tomorrow, which uh, I think Ricky and, and I feel he's not going to tell special. her it was free. It wasn't free, it was ten years of my life I had to, had to do that. Yeah, and you've been eleven with us. Think what she's gone through. She's had eleven years right. of her life. Right. Well, you know, it was, yeah. Uh, Carl would have been okay if he'd have kept quiet. Idiot. Dave in Salford. Cheers. He's right. Yeah. yeah, he's right. It's a disgrace. He has dishonoured his former employer and his girlfriend from Graham and Anna. That's a good point. It's an insult to the people that work there. They got you something they thought they really liked. They really went out and thought about it. They wrapped it up. You didn't yeah. even unwrap it in front. Because you couldn't be bothered to wrap it again, even. You could have unwrapped it. Do you know, do you know what um, uh, I, I, I really hope's happened? That before they gave it to you, they took pictures of their genitals in the toilet. as a little... <laughs> little way. So your girlfriend's going to get that and get lo loads and loads and loads of pictures of offal from people who work at XFM. What? That would be the the best Christmas gift for me. What if there's a note or something inside that they've all write, written and signed to Carl? Look, you know, he's thinking about that. Look, that is the first time he's ever <laughs> thought of that. Look at his head. Look at his Christian head. Christian Hull says, I think Carl's heart is in the right place. Don't mind. A fair point. Uh, there's one here. Um, I once got a frozen box of fish my husband found whilst working in a chip shop. Carl's <laughs> girlfriend should be grateful. Yeah, I suppose so. It, I mean, it, it's it's staggering. This one's from Jane. It says, better his girlfriend has the camera, as it looks like he hasn't got opposable thumbs. <laughs> and that's people having a dig. They don't even know you. But you know you know why I'm not a sort of big fan of sort of Christmas and buying presents and that? Anyway, because I've had bad experiences in the past when, like, you know, buying buying stuff for people. Go on. Um, you know, like, when, when I was a kid and that, right? Yeah. And you know, you, you put a lot of thought into buying presents, don't you, when you're a kid? Because you know, you haven't got that much money to. How old are we talking? Um, about eight. Right. Okay. Yeah. About eight. Right. So you, so you look like you did, but you had hair, I assume. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> so eight years old, and that I'm putting a bit of planning into it, thinking, oh, you know, what does what, what will my mum want? Yeah. Right? Now my mum's a big fan of uh, gnomes. <laughs> right. right. Obviously. Like, like gnomes. <laughs> no. And fairies and stuff like that, right? Little elves and all that stuff, right? Sure. So I thought, right, I'll look for something that's that's a bit gnomish. Right. right. And there was you a shop. You got Noel Edmonds. There was this. There was this. <laughs> there was this shop sort of down the road that um, sort of sold a lot of tat, right? Oh, yeah. good. Um, <laughs> sort of every, you know, all them shops where it, everything's quite cheap. It's sort of they sell things individually that shouldn't be, like toilet rolls and. <laughs> Yeah. That, that sort of thing. They used to be called everything's a pound. Now there's some that everything's 99p. Yeah. Because a pound wasn't cheap enough. They're undercutting the pound yeah. shop. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Go on. So anyway, so I had a look in there, thinking, right, let's have a look, see if they've got any gnomes and that. And the closest thing they had, right, was, uh, this, this figure that's called, uh, a Victoria Plum. Right? <laughs> Victoria Plum, right. Yeah, it's like a little woman. No, Victoria Plum. Right, it's, get it right. It's like, a, it's like a woman gnome, right. Okay. So I thought, oh, I should love that, right. So, uh, say that. I think it was about two quid, right. Yeah. Yeah. Invest in one of them, take it home and well chuff with myself and that, wrapping it up, pop it under the tree, thing I can't wait to see her face light up when she sees that. Do you know like when you're a kid I, I bought that like two weeks before Christmas. Sure. Right? And do you know when you're sort of excited and you want to give someone a present earlier? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I I, I sort of took my mum into this shop, right? And we're just walking about and the Victoria Plum was sort of there on the shelf. And I said to her, uh, I said, Oh, I said, look at that up there, do you like that? She said, No, it's bloody horrible. Right? Uh, oh, oh. So this is too late. It's too late to go back. You spent all your wrapped. money. It's, our money's spent. It's wrapped. It's under the tree, right? <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, I can't believe it. So I said, no, that you know, made sure she's looking at the right thing. I said, no, that that little no woman. Yeah, it's horrible. Oh no. Yeah. Right. Oh god. Christmas Day comes, right? I yeah. open my stuff. Right? <laughs> she's about this to is open really hers. This is like Dickens. She opens. <laughs> 
she opened hers and that, and she went, "Oh, that's that's lovely." That I said, "No, uh, no don't, don't give don't give me that." Do you know what I mean? You said she, she said it was she horrible. She was, you said a, you she was a liar. Yeah, for pretending for not wanting to hurt your feelings. She was a liar. And that's you know that's that's why. Don, what are you on about? Yeah, but you don't forget, do you? I don't- I still don't know how this justifies you not buying your girlfriend of eleven years an actual gift. Although that was quite touching. Yeah. Play a Christmas song, I'm, I'm welling up. Let Me Try Again by Frank Sinatra. Beautiful song. Wonderful. On, uh, BBC Radio 2. Well, it's that time of year when we give- give gifts. Yeah, absolutely, and you know, we've- we- we like to give and we like to keep on giving. Right? Yeah. And, um, that's why it's competition time. Oh, sure. Yeah, nice link. Nice. Yeah. Right. Uh, we have a, uh, platinum disc. Of Madonna's album Confessions on the Dance Floor, it's framed, classy, giving that away to a person who can climb inside Carl's brain and understand what the See, hell this is the challenge. he's doing. I, I think with we should give him a chance. Or also, but we've got um, just because we can. This is like one of those gifts we made, yeah. isn't it? We didn't buy it, we made it. This is uh, extras on DVD, signed by both of us. Uh, See, that's like giving away my camera in a way. You know what I mean? How many? You've got loads of copies of them. There's no thought in it. You know what I mean? But oh. yeah, but we were involved with that. Yeah, we sort of did that. You well, did. I did ten if, years. If you designed <laughs> the camera and then built it in a little factory somewhere and gave it to Suzanne, I'd let you mm. off, but you didn't. Mm. Also, a copy of more flannels, which I signed, mm, okay. and um, mm. some flannel collectibles. Now they're handmade, you see. Now listen, this that's not a cheap gift. The, a a yeah, set yeah. of um, those flannels collectibles, right? They're not toys. They're handcrafted, right? They went for six hundred pounds on eBay. Mm. So that's a good gift. So if you win them, pop them on eBay, 600 quid. Or 605, it, you know, they're, they're, they're very rare. <laughs> yeah. Davey in Belfast, by the way, just the last one, he says, uh, I've bought my wife a silver necklace and I got the shop to put it in a box saying white gold instead of silver. Is this wrong? So if you're Mrs. Davey from Belfast and you get something tomorrow that says white gold, um, yeah, just just maybe be careful. Pop back to the jewellers, just get them to check it. He probably thinks he's safe because she's not listening, but any friends yeah. of Dave who's, who's got a wife who's going to get a silver necklace with white and gold. And she'll be showing that off tomorrow going, that's white gold. Davey got it yesterday. Well, she'll be showing that guilty. Yeah, it'll slowly become, it'll haunt him, like Poe's the telltale heart. Tell Every the time truth. he sees it. Tell the be... truth, Davey. Tell the truth. Yeah. Say it's still, it's still a beautiful gift. It's a lovely thought, but but don't lie. Don't yeah. don't mix a lovely gift with a lie. It's this, this, this notion that that Christmas is a chore. Oh, I gotta get the missus something. I know. I know exactly. It's bizarre, isn't it? It should be. It should be a joy, Carl. Yeah, well, I do. I treat her all year round. How do you treat her all year round? We know you got through two boxes of condoms, but that to me isn't a treat. <laughs> Waking up next to you every day. Well, listen. Are we, are we doing this? Quiz right, now. Rockbusters. And we should explain what Rockbusters is. Um, don't be fooled. It has no association with the popular TV show Blockbusters. Although he's just ripped off. He's ripped off the name, but I don't yeah. want to say the quiz is anything like it. That quiz actually had a format. I don't know what this is. I know. We should give it basically. Um, Carl, uh, <laughs> I'm just thinking about it. You you describe what you it's explain. It's it, Carl. Like I can't it's, even it's, do it. Just it's like a, a cryptic. No, it's not cryptic. Because a cryptic clue actually makes sense every part of it. Yeah. You, you, you might as well call this "What band am I thinking of?" Yeah. Right. Go on. Well, then. Well, let's what, what I do is let's let's sum it up in an easy way, right? I give yeah. you some initials of an artist or a band. Yeah. Right? Mm. And they play on radio. Right? You'll know the sort of songs we play. Big good songs, right? And what I do, I give you like a little description 